Thank you for joining me. I'm Daryl Plummer, here to talk to you about the seven disruptions you might not see coming for 2024 through 2029. Now, if you've seen this presentation before, you know that I'm trying to talk about disruptions that you might have heard about, but you probably don't know either how close they are to happen or how significant they might be. Now, disruptions in Gartner are a specific kind of thing. We don't just use the word disruption to say something has changed. We use the word disruption to indicate that there has been a fundamental shift in, in some system of behavior, technology, governance, whatever, and, and that disruption doesn't go back. We're not talking about a fad that usually comes fast, spikes high, and then disappears, right? I just, um, I asked one, one of my kids asked me um, if they could buy some Pokemons, and I said, well, let me download Pokemon Go. Do you remember Pokemon Go? Is anybody still playing Pokemon Go? I think the servers are down or something. Oh, no, it's working. I got to try it again then. But, you know, it's like Cabbage Patch Kids. You know, they came and went, these fads. Well, disruptions come and they stay until something disrupts them again. Okay, so they're not short-term things. They're, they're fundamental changes. You know, we're not going back to broadcast television with three channels. You go click, 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 and, and so forth. You're going to use streaming, and it's going to be here to stay. So that's the kind of disruption we're talking about. Now, this presentation is a part of our research set um, and under the, the auspices of the Gartner Futures Lab. Now, you've probably seen, if you haven't seen the Futures Showcase down on the, the show floor, you got to go. Marty Resnick did an amazing job, and it, it's a really fun thing to look at. But the Futures Lab is, is looking at future technologies. Now, we have multiple things in the Futures Lab. We have trends, we have forces, we have disruptions, we have predictions, we have all this stuff going on. Um, but they are related to one another uh, in that they're all talking about the future. They're all talking about what practical benefit that future will bring today. And right now, disruption, we're seeing as combinatorial. It's a combinatorial effect. Now, you've heard this word probably before, but the idea is that no one disruption happens and then it's gone. Now, the, the example I've been using for years is that disruption happens in this way. P picture a quiet lake somewhere, and a giant boulder falls off a mountain and hits the lake. There's a big splash. That we call a disruption catalyst. The splash goes away quickly, however. ChatGPT was one of those, by the way. And the thing is that the ripples that radiate out from the splash zone is what we're really interested in. How does it change things? If it's a big enough splash, the ripples could overturn a boat or swamp a dock or change the shoreline. So that's what we care about, and we measure it based on that. And when you have two stones hit the lake, the ripples begin to interfere with one another. They bounce off one another and create complex patterns. That's what we're seeing. We're seeing climate change. We're seeing AI. We're seeing power generation, security, exponential technologies that work together, all colliding with one another. And they have these effects that, we, that are harder to track because they're combinatorial. So our jobs just got a lot harder. So that's what disruptions are. Now, there's another thing that we have to talk about, which is AI. And I, I mentioned in the Top Predicts presentation that I have an AI avatar, Gartner built one, of me. And uh, it's pretty fun. But I thought it would be nice to give you guys a sense of what that actually looks like. Because I can't show you mine, um, or rather, I won't show you mine. I'll show you this one, um, which will give you an idea of what it can do. We're talking about the CEO of Viola, and her name is um, Estelle Bratjanov. And we'll see her avatar here. Bonjour à toutes et à tous, chers collègues, chers partenaires, chers clients, chers amis de Veolia. French. Hoy es un día especial. Hace 170 años era la era de los primeros trenes y no había cine. Español. Si 14 de diciembre de 1852, ولد el emperador el francés Napoleón el Tercer, y wقع مرسوما بيده لشركة المياه العامة لوقف وباء الكوليرا. عن طريق توفير الماء الصالح للشرب للجميع. And Arabic. This is a real person. And her mannerisms were recorded, her voice was recorded, and the AI creates the language translation. It gives you a realistic feel of talking to a real person. You can go talk to Albert Einstein, you can go talk to Shakespeare online today. Because this technology is coming and we'll all have to deal with it. I wanted to give you a sense of that because it's important not to ignore some of these things that will sneak in and sort of disrupt your workplace as well as disrupt your per personal lives. You know, I, you know, imagine that you had an avatar that you could send off to do something that you can't or don't want to do, right? The, the parent-teacher's meeting at the school, I don't ever want to go. One day I'm sending my avatar in my place. 
You know, but the idea of work, of course, is that your business is going to want to use that avatar to its advantage and will use it where you can't be or where they would rather not have you be. You know, and I said in the top predicts presentation, we have to ask the question, do we get paid for that? Right? If you don't get paid for it, you probably shouldn't let them record that avatar. So AI is at the heart of disruption going forward. People ask me, what comes after AI? And my answer is more AI. We're going to have to figure out how to get it right. We're going to have to figure out how to make it stop having errors. We're going to have to figure out how we should use it, what we should want it to do, and then use it safely and productively. So we're going to be figuring out this AI thing for a while. Anybody here want to say how they know when artificial general intelligence has arrived? Anybody? No, nobody wants to answer that question. I'll answer it. It's when you can't tell the difference. If you can't tell the difference, it doesn't matter whether it's really intelligent, whether it really reasons, or whether it's a real person, because you can't tell the difference. And so everything is on a course toward that notion that AI is getting better and better, so we can't tell the difference. But it's not the only disruption that's happening. It impacts everything. Here we have seven plus one, the one being AI avatars, disruptions on our scale. Our scale is designed around the idea that it can allow you to compare disruptions that we go, that we're gonna look at. The seven are on the left, on that curve. On the right, we're seeing historical disruptions to give you an idea of what the current disruptions might be like over time. Moving up the scale means it's more impactful, more secondary effects, more ripples radiating out and changing the shoreline. And that is our mechanism for looking at how these things happen. If you're enhancing markets at the bottom, you're at the lowest level of disruption. That's like adding catalytic converters to a car. When you're talking about extending markets, it's about adding hybrid electric vehicles on the street. When you transform markets, you go to full EV fleets. When you reinvent markets, you go from cars driving on the road to flying cars. And when you go to revolutionize, it means it's big enough to affect the entire world. That's how we're talking about these things. And we'll use that to rate these disruptions as we go. I'm still waiting for my flying car. You know, I was promised flying cars, underwater bubble cities, and floating cities, and I got social media. <laughs> I'm a little bit angry about that. But the reality is the disruptions keep coming at us. So in 2029, these things will move up the chart. It's very hard to get to the top of these charts, but these are fairly significant should they play out the way that they have been going so far. All right, let's jump into the real ones. Drones plus intelligence will outnumber people. This is probably not surprising to you. The notion that drones are going to be out there is something we've been dealing with a long time. And, but what mostly what we think of is we think of those fun drones you see at the park. Somebody's buzzing over your head. The thing is that drones are being put to real uses, spraying crops in a field, swarms of them measuring the temperature across a general area, delivering pesticides. All these things are real world examples of drones. And there are going to be more and more of them that come along. I'll give you an example. David Furlonger, one of the guys who helped build this presentation, was talking about the fact he lives in British Columbia. And like Australia, they have significant issues with forest fires, because forest fires happen all around the world, California, Australia, BC. And there were 4,677 fires burning over 4 million hectares of land in BC. The cost in 2023 was one billion for only half that number. Now, enter drones. The idea is that in a town called Layton, or Lytton, around two and a half um, thousand people were impacted, let's say, by the fires. And this idea was that drones could be brought in to help fight the fires, to help locate people. I saw a wonderful video of a lost child found by a drone in the middle of a jungle. So life-saving technology is coming from these drones. So we have a, a, a disruption that says that drones are a big part of the plan for safety, emergency response, delivery, and everything that's going on. Technological insects with purpose is the way I like to think of them. We even have drones that can mimic bees. Do you remember the bees were dying off? I think they still are. But what's going to pollinate the plants? So the, we saw the bee movie. You know what happens if they're not pollinating plants. But now we have drones, tiny little bee drones that can fly around with these little Velcro strips hanging from them, collect pollen, and take them to other plants. You know, if you're out back and you feel a little sting and you go like that and you open your hand and you got a drone instead of a bee, you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> the idea is that these drones are going to be used for good things with purpose, but they're also being used in multiple ways. So in agriculture, I talked about light cargo deliveries. The idea of a you know, light cargo delivery was proposed a long time ago, the Amazon drone that drops your package off. 
you know, we have autonomous vehicles that, well, most of us still don't drive in them, but they're, they're out there. Autonomous ships, which are safe because they're in a big ocean. And warfare, where we're seeing the most development happening around drones. You know, interesting, though, on a personal note, I'm dri I live in Atlanta, Georgia. Chick-fil-A is in Atlanta, Georgia. Now I'm hungry. But the idea was that, you know, Chick-fil-A is always reinventing how they deliver food to people. Go through the drive through or pull up and park and they'll bring your food out. I'm sitting at a red light and a Chick-fil-A drone pulls up next to me. No person, just a box with wheels and a lot of Chick-fil-A sandwiches. Okay? I did not steal them. I did think about it. But the reality is that you're going to see these things appear around you and you're not expecting it. And these drones are now out there being able to do things that you won't even think about as being valuable, but they wind up becoming valuable. So we're going to see these drones coming along. In the warfare camp, we have to realize that we're going to see more of that because it makes militaries more efficient. The more efficient ways to, produce, to uh, conduct a war are what we want. And if we can do it without putting more human lives in danger, that would be a good thing too. So what gets disrupted here? This is how we use the scale. In 2024, it's extending markets because we're seeing those Chick-fil-A drones pull up next to us. By 2029, they'll be reinventing home markets that are now fully drone delivered and fully drone done. You won't have to send out agents into the field to, look, to climb on your roof for that roof damage. You won't have to send out agents to check on crops and pesticides. The drones will do it for you. So we're talking about light cargo delivery. We're talking about warehouse deliveries. We're talking about troop deployments. All of these things are disrupted. So what do we have to do? Well, we're in a world where we have to start thinking about the unintended consequences. When we first started talking about drone deliveries, everybody said no. Do you know why? The main reason was because people said, what happens if that package drone flies past my second floor bathroom window? Turns and takes a picture and then keeps going on. This was something that people hadn't thought of, and they said, oh, unintended consequence. We have to be ready for those things. And actually, those drones will have agency increasingly. They will be responsible. They will be auto autonomous from human beings. And that scares people. So we'll actually see how that progresses, but it's closer than you might think. Now, our second disruption here is autonomous agents. I I'm sorry, the idea of guardian agents. Apologies, this is a term that we came up with earlier this year. You've heard about it in multiple presentations because it could be very critical. Having technology that actually oversees what AI is doing is critical because humans cannot do it themselves. Human in the loop is an equation that will collapse on itself because human beings are not numerous enough to track all the AI that's going to be out there and human beings are not reliable enough to do it right. So you have to have agents that are going to come in here and do it for you. At the intersection of security, observability, filtering, and monitoring, multi-agent systems, and agent orchestration, you find guardian agents. A company called Explain, spelled A-I-X-P-L-A-I-N, is delivering guardian agents now. They're a startup, but they are actually delivering a lot of different kinds of agents, mentor agents, broker agents, and guardian agents to help protect people and to make sure the quality of their AI results are assured. Now, people say, well, you know, hey, well, we're in a business. We don't deal with that kind of stuff. Well, you know, if you're a bank, you might want to have guardian agents that help your customers get the best deals, get the best loans, help them understand how to manage their accounts. I have children who I would like to have a guardian agent checking where they're, where they're at during the day, how fast they're driving on the street, and if they're watching YouTube and skibbity toilet way too much. So the idea of a guardian agent can be applied anywhere. And we will do that to actually make them more secure, make them more accurate, make them less dangerous over time. So here's where we are on guardian agents, extending markets in 2024. We'll be transforming markets in 2029 because human in the loop will be a thing of the past as a primary strategy. Of course, there'll be humans in the loop for a long time. But as a primary strategy, you'll be saying AI must combat AI. AI must ensure the safety of AI. And you, somebody asked me, a smart aleck asked me, well, wait a minute, if the drones or if the, the, uh, the agents are watching the other agents, who watches the agents that watch the agents? I, I said, get out, just leave, <laughs> go. The reality is that the problem space shrinks with each layer. So if you've got a problem space, you've got agents watching them, the problems that they deal with are less, the next level they're less and less, you won't have an infinite regress. You'll probably only have to go one or two layers deep. So. When we do this, we can do self-healing processes. 
We can do autonomous systems. We can start seeing the evolution of systems to do what they need to do based on their own terms. So what do you need to do? You have to actually understand that agents are going to accelerate their proliferation. You're going to wake up one day and they're going to be agents all around you and you don't know how they got there. So you have to be starting to think right now about securing agents with technology. So if you have a security observability, monitoring, filtering, you know, and masking practice, start thinking about how you turn those things from just security mechanisms to guardrails, from guardrails to guardian agents. If you're a tech provider, that should be your next speech. From guardrails to guardian agents, that's going to give you a certain amount of success. So develop these products and focus on low-hanging fruit, things that are not life critical, but certainly need to be overseen. Here's one of the fun ones. What if you could put yourself in a movie? Right? So, you know, I, 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 every guy in here wants to be Brad Pitt. I know it. I want to be Forrest Whitaker because I look more like him. <laughs> if you ever saw that movie Ghost Dog, you know what I'm talking about. But the idea is that we're in a world now, because of AI avatars, we will be able to create personal cinema of ourselves. We can say, I want to play that role. I want to play in the movie and see myself. But more broadly, I'd like to choose the actor that is in the movie, not just me, but another actor that I'd like to see doing it. A lot of people, when they saw Ben Affleck as Batman, were complaining because they wanted to pick someone else, Nathan Fillion or someone like that. They'll be able to do it now. And personalized cinema means we disrupt a whole bunch of stuff. Because when you go to personalized cinema, you start thinking first, am I really want to want to watch myself or certain actors in these roles? Because they may not come off as good as the original ones. People in Hollywood are pretty good at picking the right people. You know, and if you pick the acts and the, um, you know, the, the actors, so you create a whole line of content that somebody should get royalties for. When they actually build these systems, you guys remember the Hollywood strike that went on earlier in the year and late last year? The writers won strike and the actors joined them. The reason they did it is because the studios were saying, we're going to use your name, image, and likeness to actually make a movie without you. And they said, you can't do that. You have to pay me. The writers, they said, we're going to use AI to write a movie that's just like one you would have written. And the writers said, that's not fair. You're stealing my skill. You're stealing my talents. We've already seen it with musicians. You know, The weekend, a lawsuit. Because AI had created songs that sounded exactly like them, but were actually better than their songs. And they said, if those are a hit, I want my cut. So they weren't you know, negotiating to stop these things. They were negotiating on how much money they can get from it. So when we think about this, it's going to change everything about music production and delivery. It's going to change. In 2029, it's reinventing markets because production companies are going to make movies that are designed for you to insert new actors in or you insert yourself in it. They're going to change the royalty and licensing rules around it. They're going to change the viewer engagement model because you probably won't go to a theater because nobody else wants to see you in that movie instead of bad print. So you got to watch it at home. So all of these things get disrupted, and you have to start thinking about customization of content using digital and AI. I saw this wonderful video the other day. It creeped me out. It was big scoops of chocolate chip ice cream in a bowl. And I'm like, oh, chocolate chip ice cream. look good. Then the chocolate chip ice cream started moving, and it moved and more, and it turned into a bunch of puppies with black and white spots. It was the creepiest thing I've ever seen. But I started thinking, how can I do that? You know, morphing content for your business is a great place to go. You got to get on that now because you don't want to be watching other people do it to you. You got to do it for yourself. So talent is going to be changed because different talent can be inserted in different situations. 